Last comment, Carl, I'm uh, making the statement on behalf of my colleague, Minister Ross. I uh, welcome today's mobilising of ministers with responsibility for the biggest emitting sectors in our society. It's timely in light of the fact that COP24 is taking place this week in Poland with the aim of finalising the implementation of the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Today's engagement demonstrates that, similarly, our government supports the commitment to tackle climate change and reduce our national emissions. It is clear we face an enormous challenge. It is only through collective ambition and cross-departmental efforts that Ireland will begin to transition to a low-carbon society and achieve our long-term goals. Transport has a critical yet challenging role to play in the national mitigation effort. It is a sector where fossil fuel use is firmly embedded and travel demand is growing due to economic recovery and growing population. Despite this demand growth, 2017 saw a welcome fall in transport emissions for the first time in four years. But we must be on our guard because despite technological advancements in improving vehicle efficiencies and new lower carbon fuels, we continue to grapple with the reality that emission saving from cleaner vehicles are being offset by strong growth in transport demand. We must remain proactive in seeking to decouple demography and the economy from climate emissions. In transport, we are doing this through four main avenues. Firstly, increased investment in sustainable mobility. Improving public and active transport services and infrastructure is key if Ireland is to cater in an environmentally sustainable way for increasing travel demand and provide a meaningful alternative to the private car. Under the National Development Plan, 8.6 billion euro has been committed to public and active transport over the next 10 years. Forthcoming key projects include Metrolink, Bus Connects, the DART expansion programme and increased funding for cycling and walking infrastructure across the state. Prioritising investment in our public transport network is working. During the reporting period of 2017 alone, an additional 16 million public transport passenger journeys were made in Ireland, while the number of walking and cycling trips also increased, particularly within the Greater Dublin area. The second strand employed to reduce transport emissions is promoting a switch away from fossil fuels to lower emitting alternative power sources. Even with an expanded and enhanced public transport system, some people will not be in a position to move away from the car. In these cases, we need to encourage a move towards cleaner alternatives. Under the National Policy Framework on Alternative Fuels Infrastructure for Transport in Ireland, our national ambition that by 2030 all new cars and vans sold would be zero emission capable was clearly outlined. To support this ambition, a low emission vehicle task force was established to accelerate the deployment of low carbon transport technologies. Phase one of the task force focused solely on incentivising electric vehicles and a number of their recommendations were adopted in budgets 2018 and 2019, expanding the suite of supports available for electric vehicles. The impact of these incentives is clearly seen this year with significant growth in electric vehicle sales and increasing numbers of low or zero emission vehicles on roads. Phase two of the task force is underway and is focusing on promoting other alternative fuels and technologies, including natural gas, biomethane and hydrogen. This task force work puts emphasis on the heavy duty vehicle sector, which accounts for nearly one fifth of transport emissions. In the coming years, I hope with the task force support to see movement towards cleaner fuels in this competitive sector. Meanwhile, in light of the commitment that from summer next year no more diesel-only buses will be purchased for the urban public bus fleet, our department is launching a low emission bus trial next week. This trial will assess a range of alternative fuels and technologies to further inform future bus purchasing decisions. Not only will new cleaner buses reduce emissions, they will also provide the opportunity for the public to experience the benefits of non-conventional fuels and begin to normalise their uptake in other transport areas too. The third channel which plays a major role is the biofuels obligation scheme. The percentage rate of biofuels as a share of road transport energy has doubled since 2010. It is intended that the blend of biofuels will continue to incrementally increase on a sustainable basis in the future. Due to heavy reliance on oil in transport sector, this is a critical mitigation tool. 
In 2017 alone, biofuel use reduced transport emissions by over 3% without impacting on travel activities and is making an important contribution to reducing transport emissions. Finally, we are tackling emissions through better vehicle standards. We are pushing at European level to achieve more efficient production standards to ensure that all cars, vans and trucks registered in Europe are increasingly more efficient. This presents Irish consumers with cleaner vehicles presenting a greener choice. Not only are we delivering measures to reduce transport emissions, we must also improve our transport sector's resilience to the effects of climate change. In 2017, my department published its first sectoral adaptation plan, developing resilience to climate change in the Irish transport sector, in which risks facing the sector were identified. We have experienced the consequences of extreme weather events with damage to infrastructure and disruption to public transport services. Key transport stakeholders are making great strides in climate adaptation, identifying vulnerable areas and future-proofing them to withstand more extreme weather events. We will continue to build this capacity to ensure that Ireland stays safely on the move, regardless of the climate situ situation. We will continue to work with agencies to raise awareness and build up our resilience to climate change. And finally, if I may just yeah. say last night, Ireland, I wish to reiterate that we face a challenge to decarbonise our society. This department is heavily committed to, to taking on, on the challenge. To the next Thank minister. you.